Rivian post mixed fourth quarter and underwhelming EV production outlook. What is happening investors? It is your boy Jack. I am not a financial advisor and today we are going to be speaking all about Rivian and their Q4 and full year earnings essentially. Another very very mixed bag. The last couple of days have been huge for EVs. We have Rivian's earnings, we had Neo's earnings after hours last night and Tesla's investor day is happening after market close today. That is going to well and truly shake things up. But in today's video, I really want to focus on Rivian. We haven't spoken about them in a long time on the channel. They are actually one of the companies I've literally followed from day one. Uh, I remember seeing them go all the way up here to the 170s, 180s. I was never in them because even when they went public, they went public at a huge valuation and I already had so much money in the EV market. But it's one that I've always wanted to be invested in to an extent. You know, they haven't had the best run whatsoever as of late. They're at levels they were back at at 11th of May 22. They've been lower. They're, they're probably going to trend down a little bit after these most recent earnings. You can see I'm recording this just before market opens. And they are down about 8.8% before market opens. So quite clearly some disappointments came out of this earnings. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through it. Go through the most important parts. We're going to take a look at how much cash they have left. Deliveries, uh, the expected deliveries for the next quarter and next year compared to what analysts expected. And all of those juicy things. Ultimately, we're going to find out if we believe that, you know, Rivian could be worth investing in now around $17 a share. Or if you should be waiting a little while longer. We're going to try to come up with the answer to that question. So right before we do that, could I please ask you to hit that juicy like button nice and early for me. It helps me out an awful lot, my friends. I appreciate everybody showing the support since we got back. And subscribe if you end up enjoying this video. I want more content, baby. Why not? Also, if you're interested in getting some free money for yourself, all you got to do is click the link in the comment down below. Sign up to Weeble, deposit $100. You can get a lot of free shares. You could sell them, put it straight into Rivian, put it straight into any other stock you want. It really is free money on the table. Now, with that being said, a quick rundown of what happened. We do have their shareholder letter here as well, which will have all their financials in, but a really quick rundown. Uh, in November, Rivian reaffirmed its full year guidance of an adjusted loss before income taxes, appreciation and amortization of $5.4 billion. So if you are perhaps somebody who hasn't followed Rivian as closely as a lot of other EV stocks, you will see that number is huge. Rivian is a lot bigger than the large majority of EV stocks out there. Uh, they might not have been spoken about as much as a lot of other EV stocks because they weren't as exciting. They were already very established, but they are a very, very large company. Now, they're still far away from being a, a, a profitable company, from being a considerable player in the markets, but they are one of the bigger ones by a long shot. For 2023, Rivian forecast vehicle production of 50,000 vehicles. Now, that would be roughly double last year's amount, but below many analyst expectations of around 60,000. So, you know, without a reference point, you can't understand if this is good or bad. You can quite clearly see it's coming in, what's that, about 18.5% lower than analyst expectations, which straight away you know is, is not really uh, the, the best thing in the world there was close to i believe 10,000 deliveries uh, in the last quarter of this year so it would lead you to ask the question you know why is this going to slow down and we have the answer to that question rivian is focusing on ramping up production of its or one truck and suv as well as an electric delivery van it builds for amazon its largest individual shareholder so that might be the reason you're aware of who rivian are it's because of that partnership they have with Amazon. It's a very, very, very good partnership to have. I don't think anybody needs me to explain why. So their adjusted loss per share was 173 versus 194 estimate. So that's obviously quite good. Revenue, on the other hand, was 663 million versus a 742.4 million estimate. So coming in again considerably under where analysts expected them to be. The company reported that net loss of 5.2 billion, narrower than guidance of 5.4 billion. So a smaller loss before all of these things. For 2023, we have those vehicle production numbers that we're expecting for. And trust me, guys, they're going to need to hit this to have any sort of investor confidence come the second half of the year. Even they're going to need to be in line with the goals that they're setting out. They said supply chain continues to be the main limiting factor of our production. We hear this. This is like an echo from every single EV automaker. So again, you can't hold it against them. But at the same time, it is a little bit of an easy escape. And I think that's why everybody is using it. During the quarter, we encountered multiple days of lost production due to supplier shortages. We expect supply chain challenges to persist into 2023, but with better predictability relative to what was experienced in 2022. 
and there is more on this in the shareholder letter that we will be expanding on shortly. Rivian said it expects to achieve a positive gross profit in 2024. Now, it's always been 24-25, so to hear this is genuinely a good thing. I know people obviously like seeing profits now, but that is not very far away. Net loss for the fourth quarter was 1.7 billion, narrower than 2.5 billion loss of reported a year earlier. So again, that's a good trend, a good upward trend. Quarterly revenue of 663 million jumped from 54 million the year earlier. So solid, some solids in there. You know, that's why I'm trying to say it's a, it's a mixed earnings all in all. There's some good and some bad. Now, in regards to cash position, at the end of the last year, the company had about 12.1 billion in cash, down from 13.8 billion at the end of the third quarter and 15.5 billion as of June 30th. So you can see that they are absolutely slamming through cash. CapEx for the fourth quarter were 294 million compared to 455 million. And again, we're going to elaborate on that. Rivian said inflation has been a factor in its supply chain and will continue to take steps to ramp up production and reduce material costs by slimming down its engineering and vehicle design, along with commercial cost down efforts. And economies of scale will come into play sooner or later as well. To elaborate on production, in late 2022, we started production on our second manufacturing shift, which is a key step in ramping our R1 production. We are excited with the team's progress and look forward to the second shift continuing to grow its contribution to overall production. The fixed cost leverage derived from the rapid scaling of our plant will drive meaningful improvement in our returns on capital over the medium term. What we just spoke about there, the economies of scale, it's all going to come to fruition, hopefully for Rivian. We will employ numerous learnings from normal in our announced manufacturing facility in Georgia, including manufacturing layout, material flow, and efficient manufacturing processes. So that is good to see. Now, cost efficiency. This is going to be so extraordinarily important for Rivian over the next, let's say, 12 to 18 months before they can turn completely profitable. They don't want to have to raise much more capital. They don't want to have to do those things. They don't want to have to cut more workforce. They want to be able to just be as cost efficient as possible in order to turn that profit quicker. During 2022, we proactively took steps to simplify our future product portfolio and drive a lower cost structure across all aspects of our business. Sustaining our focus and improving our operating efficiency remain key objectives for 23 and beyond. Our first high volume global platform or two will be fundamental to making these things happen. To achieve the long-term cost structure that will enable Rivian to drive towards sustainable growth and impact, we implemented a company-wide program designed to maximize efficiency throughout the organization across the key cost elements of material costs, logistics, labor, and overhead, indirect costs, and capital expenditures. Good. This is exactly what they need to do. Again, if I am somebody who wants to invest in Rivian, I would love to own some very small part of Rivian, this is what I want to read. This is what I need to get confidence put into me to put my own hard-earned money in there. So you can see in 2022, there was 20,332 total vehicle deliveries and they produced 10,020 of them in the fourth quarter and delivered, where are we, about 8,054 of them in the fourth quarter as well. So to give it to them, they really, really did ramp up in Q4. Now Q4 is traditionally the best quarter for EVs deliveries full stop for pretty much every single company out there. That's why, you know, you may read that number and think that 50,000 seems a little bit on the low side, but it is going to be more realistic. There is definitely going to be a drop off in the first two quarters of this year for more than just that reason. When we look at the business outlook, okay, we'll come back here in a second, but they say, we have scheduled downtime in production this year to enhance our products and production process. During the first quarter of 2023, we have intentionally slowed the commercial van production line for the implementation of our Enduro motor system and LFP battery packs. These technologies are expected to provide significant performance and cost advantages. So this is another part of, you know, investing in a, a company at this relatively early stage of their life cycle. You are going to have things like this. This is going to negatively impact next quarter's earnings. At least we are aware of it. Wall Street will, you know, bake that into their predictions to, you know, their price targets, their delivery targets, all of that good stuff. But it still is going to affect it nonetheless. So be aware of that. If you are intending on investing in Rivian over the next three months before the next earnings report comes out, just be ready. Keep a very close eye on the position. Keep a close eye on updates. And while we're on this point, this piece of news came out today after this had even came out. And they issued a recall for nearly 13,000 vehicles. Um, it's not really as bad as it sounds, honestly. And again, guys, keep in mind, I'm not invested in them, so I have no reason to sugarcoat these things. I think, if anything, I'm usually harsher on the companies I am invested in. 
but they announced a recall of certain 2022 R1T and R1S vehicles, potentially impacting nearly 13,000 autos in total. According to the NHTSA recall notice, an issue with the deployment of the passenger side airbag is the cause of the recall. So, Rivian said that they will offer a no appointment necessary visit to Rivian service centers and pop-up locations up to six days a week to inspect and replace the faulty components. So, it's one of those headlines that screams absolutely horrific, terrible things, but it really isn't that bad and it should be a relatively easy fix for the company. And you know, seeing this sooner rather than later could stop some absolute tragedy happening. We expect to ramp off our second shift for the R19 to continue to progress through the first quarter of 2023. During the fourth quarter of 2023, we intend to take both the R1 and RCV line down for a limited time to prepare for the integration of vehicle technologies we plan to implement in 2024. So we do have a very good roadmap of how the year is expected to play out. And it's very difficult, honestly, to guess what is ultimately going to happen here, in my personal opinion. When we do look at that share price, you know, you can clearly see people were not happy at all with these irons. And sadly, what happened was there was this area of support accumulating here at about $19.16 a share or so. And they had just come back in there just before earnings. And then, boom, this is what happens. So, I, I don't think um, we're going to see a super fast rebound. I could be wrong, and I do hope I'm wrong. I would really love to see Rivian get back up above this $19 mark and show any kind of strength. But from what we are reading here... I don't think this is going to be, you know, the most explosive play in the whole world. We can only hope that they do perform as well as they're saying they want to. Uh, there is no, you know, revisions is what I would say. People wouldn't want to see worse revisions come out for Rivian anytime soon. And hopefully they can, you know, turn things around and have a bit of a steady upward climb. Because as far as EV stocks go, they haven't had the same climb from these kind of mid-January lows that a lot of other ones have. Yes, to be fair, they went from 15 up to 22 which is a great return but they came right back down a lot of other companies did too don't get me wrong but they just haven't seen that explosiveness come out about them but anyway my friends that is my thoughts on rivian's most recent earnings their full year report very mixed bag i still do want to have a position in these guys but i am personally not quite confident enough to invest right now given everything i know but I will be keep my eyes on them a lot closer than I have been over the last few months. I have to be honest, I, I, I start spending too much time on my Teslas, charge points, Lucids, Neos, all of the Chinese stocks. I'm going to spend a lot more time looking into these. Amazon is one who I'm going to be making a video on soon as well. So I'm going to look more into that partnership. And if anything changes, you will be the first one to know. But if you watch this video all the way till the end, you, my friend, are a true legend. I really do appreciate you. From the bottom of my heart, your support means the world to me. If you enjoyed, all I ask is you hit that juicy like button, subscribe for more content. And if you want to support me, that free money you get from Weeble, sign up to deposit $100. We both get some money, baby. What's not to love? Everybody's happy. Anyway, guys, I hope you all have a beautiful, blessed day. I'll see you in another video very soon. Peace.